Hello, I'm Herb, and I'm a member of the Los Angeles International Fern Society and also the San Diego International Fern Society. But what I'm going to talk to you today are my opinions and not necessarily those of the fern societies. What we're going to talk about today is how do you identify a Wallinkii platycerium as compared to a bifurcatum or a uh, a helii or a vicii, which are all four of them are members of the bifurcated complex. But the Wallinkii is unique and uh, at first glance it looks very similar to a bifurcatum or sometimes a helii, but uh, we're going to talk today about some very unique differences. So first of all, let me kind of cover what some of the characteristics of each individual uh, species is. This one here is a uh, bifurcatum. And notice how narrow the shield fronds are. Let me see if I can. This is another bifurcatum here. And there again, notice how narrow the shape of the shield, the, not, the, not the shield fronds, I'm talking about the fertile fronds. There's a narrow fertile fronds. Now if we come around here, this is a helii. And look how wide the fertile fronds are on this one. Another helii here with wide fertile fronds. Also notice how the, the shield fronds are kind of rounded at the top. They don't open it up as much as a, uh, as a, uh, a bifurcatum will. This is another uh, helii over here. And look how majestic the shield fronds are on this baby. This is my Helii Jimmy. And there we go, and we got the wide fertile fronds. The other one is a, a Vicii. This is my Vicii with narrow frond. A Vicii can come with some narrow fronds or some wide fronds. And uh, the Vicii is, is uh, a, a very tolerant uh, plant for sun. Looks like it's got a dead frond here I can pull out. That's not ready to let go yet. Notice how the shield fronds grow up to a very deeply lobed and then after a while the the uh, the uh, skin kind of leaves and it leaves veins and they, they think that the veins are good for collecting dew for when it's uh, during drought periods but this is my uh, my beauty here I love this plant all right now let's let's come around and we're going to look at some uh, uh, Wallinkii. This one here has got uh, this is my Wallinkii Schofield. It's got some brown spots on it from uh, the, the leaves. We had a lot of rain, uh, too much rain this winter. The uh, <coughs> spots is maybe some kind of a bacteria on there, but it's killing the leaves. But the, there's, we got new ones coming out. They're nice and beautiful and clean, and they don't have that. So. Uh, the dead front here we'll get rid of that baby so one thing that's unique about the Wallinkii is, is if you look at the bud you can see we got uh, like 12 fertile fronds coming out of there and if you notice when the, the brand new ones come out they kind of grow edgewise like this then as they mature they, they rotate over that edgewise growth is characteristic of a uh, Wallinkii. So you've got two characteristics. You've got 12 fertile fronds as compared to maybe six fertile fronds for bifurcatum. And you've got uh, fertile fronds that grow edgewise and then turn rotate to horizontal to catch the sun. Now, one trait that Wallinkii have that most people recognize as a Wallinkii is the fertile fronds tend to grow downward. Now this is my Wallinkii weeks. And you notice how that brand new fertile frond is growing out edgewise and then as it gets a little bit older it'll rotate over and uh, droop down 
and uh, this drooping characteristic is what's most commonly recognized as a Wallinkii trait. You notice they don't have any fronds growing vertical like the ones up above it do. They grow vertical towards the sun. The Schofield I have over here, it's growing vertical and, and protruding out. And it's not drooping down like a, a traditional Wallinkii does. So this Wallinkii weeks over here does droop down. All right, let's see if we got this. Another Wallinkii I have here. It's a Pygmian. Let's see if I can find a mature example of a Pygmian. Well, here's one here. It's been recently mounted. Uh, it's been sold to a customer. I'm waiting for springtime to come so I can ship it back east. And you see how the fertile fronds is, is a new one that's growing out edgewise. And uh, then they turn horizontal. And, and, and But they're staying vertical. They're not drooping down. So <clears throat> here's a Wallinkii with fertile fronds. It's not young enough to have 12 fronds yet. It will as it gets older. Uh, but you do have the, the edgewise growth of the new fertile fronds. So um, um, some people say this is a lot of Wallinkii, but I, I claim it is a Wallinkii. So, um, right, so that's about all I can cover. You've got the three traits. You've got the number of fertile fronds, which is uh, 12 for Wallinkii, where only six on a bifurcatum or a helii. You've got uh, edgewise growth through your fertile fronds. And <clears throat> the fertile fronds can be wide or narrow. <clears throat> There's two different cultivars within the uh, Wallinkii family. You've got the narrow frond and you've got the wide frond. With the bifurcatums, they divide it into a helii and a bifurcatum. I suspect someday they will take Wallinkii when they get to know it better and divide it into a, a wide species and a narrow species. So that, that's a Wallinkii pygmian you're looking at here. This one up here is a, uh, a, a Vicii limonii. And uh, I've only had that thing for about six months now, but it's starting to look pretty good. I've got a couple up here in full sun. These both came from uh, Barbara Joe's uh, collection. Barbara Joe uh, was a member of the Los Angeles Fern Society, and she's now passed away, but she's uh, well known for uh, documenting an awful lot of, uh, of ferns and wrote, wrote a lot of books on ferns. and very well known in the Fern Society. But these came from her collection, they're, they're uh, Vicii. Well, that, that's my uh, summary of how to recognize a Vicii compared to a Bifurcatum or a uh, Helii or a Vicii. All four of them are members of the Bifurcatum complex. If you're a fern lover and you like staghorn ferns, Bifurcatums, or any kind of ferns, I suggest you join your local fern society. Look at Google and see where the, uh, there's one in your area. And join them, support them. You get beautiful publications every month or every quarter uh, telling you about different uh, plants and so forth. They're very educational. And you meet a lot of really knowledgeable people about uh, ferns. And, you know, good place if you're a collector, you like to collect different staghorn ferns. Through your fern society is a great way to make contacts to, to collect uh, other species. That's all for now and uh, happy growing.